Good evening and welcome to this online version and episode of Terp Talk. And it's Thursday night and I'm Wayne Viner. Along for the ride is Mason Viner. Mason, and a lot of talk, a lot of chatter about who might be next for the Maryland basketball coaching position. Uh, as you look around Terp Nation, what do you see? What do you hear? see a lot of names being thrown out and, and not many that I think you can really act on at this point, despite the fact that it looks like some news will be coming out tomorrow morning uh, into next week. There's a lot of guys that are current head coaches and and not a lot that are going to pull a turgeon and just pick up and leave a program that they've built and, and kids that they've committed to coaching. That's a good point. I don't know how you pick a current coach right now. There's a rumor out there that the announcement might be as early as Friday. It might be early next week as to who we think it's going to be. I can't imagine hiring a Kevin Willard or an Andy Enfield and having them quit the job they have right now and come to Maryland in the middle of a season. I, I don't ever remember that happening. But Let's go over who are the top names that you're still hearing. Yeah, guys like Andy Enfield and Kevin Willard are obviously out there. Uh, Jeff Ehrman had a piece about Sam Cassell possibly being interested in the job earlier today, which is not really a name that I like. And then you kind of go down your list. Uh, Nate Oates is still a name to be talked about, even though I don't think Maryland has even close to enough money uh, to buy out that contract, even with the help of Under Armour, they don't have enough money to buy that out. It's just not worth it, I think, uh, when he comes down in dollars and cents. Ryan Odom uh, still floating around out there. There's, you know, there's the names that you have to be seriously considering, and then there's the long list of guys that could be that. Now, I think if an announcement's being teased, it could just be that they are going to bring in an executive search firm to kind of figure out what the Lord, fan base wants. And, but that seems to be what Damon Evans does. And, you know, I'm a fan of Damon. Damon's always willing to talk to us, but he definitely likes his executive search firms. How do you have a, need an executive search firm to find out who's available as a basketball coach? This is not beating the bushes to find the next football coach. This is supposed to be a top 15, top 20 program. You don't need an executive search firm for this. Yeah, but if you look around at some of the last things that have happened around Maryland Athletics, they brought in an executive search firm to hire their interim AD. They brought in an executive search firm to hire Mike Loxley when that was clearly the move to do for football. So When, when Damon goes to lunch, does he need an executive search firm to find which cafeteria on campus he's going to? I don't think so. but And, and I, I really like Damon, and thank you for coming on. <laughs> Uh, Damon's been on during the game, after the game, before the game. He is a very accessible to the Turp Talk crew. He did make, pardon the segue, he made good on a promise that you asked him on the radio, which CBS Sports Radio, when he first got the job about one thing he needed to do. What did he tell you? Well, I think he said that he needed to fix the scoreboard. He did say that. And what finally happened? And he, and he did that. Now, the scoreboard has been fixed. I'm hoping they do finish the job and get the other one done before this next football season. But the other one of what? The other scoreboard. It's done. That's it. Well, that That's kind of ridiculous you, and sad. You know that the reason is they can't put any more weight on the roof. I do, but they could have gone about making some other adjustments with that. Okay. Meanwhile, back to our story. So let me. we have one guy that we know mm. who really supports the program, and we're not here to uh, – to ruin any friendships, so we're not going to use any particular names, but the guy that he wants is Ricky Patino. I talked to Keith off. I've talked to others to say it won't happen. Gary Williams wouldn't, who's part of this, would not go with a Ricky Patino. What do you think? Yeah, I've talked to some different people that say there's, there's just no chance uh, that they would stand by that. Other big donors to the school and, and people around it, that there's just not an opportunity for that to really be the case at Maryland just mm -hmm. because look you, oh, and welcome in to what we know uh, used to know as the little dog up to about 70 pounds now dog's not so little uh, do you have an opinion no just no. want somebody who plays defense like a dog and I'm with that 
uh, would you give Ryan Odom a look? Because he was a hot name a couple no, of years ago. No, and I think that we need to start just throwing some of these names out. Kim English, not ready. Not ready. That's an assistant at Maryland. That's not a head coach at Maryland. And and I know that others immediately want to say that that's because he's an African-American. And no, to me, it's because he's 31. Well, if you look at the fan community, there's a lot of people that say that. The point at a lot of these coaching searches – and bring other factors like race into them. And I think Maryland, if you look around, is oh, is very man. no. Um just no. That, that it, doesn't accepting play of that. And Kim English just isn't ready to be a head coach of Maryland. Now he beat Maryland, and that's fair that people had some buzz around him when George uh Mason had a really strong start to the season. And a guy that I would love to see it because he clearly loves this area and loves Maryland. That's the guy that I'm looking for, but not I'm not looking to bring in somebody that's oh, young. No. I'm looking to make something happen here. And even going back to what we were talking about before uh, Ellie, our dog, walked into the picture, is you can't in a lot of ways bring in a guy like Rick Pitino. Maryland has just never been known to be the place that would bring in somebody that's, let's say, uh, less than above board. Well, into... how about a guy that's just here to win basketball games? I'll leave the rest of it out. They're not going to bring in a guy who's just here to win basketball games. And but I don't think that, that I don't think that has anything to do with that. Well, but Rick Pitino broke the law. There's okay. a difference between winning basketball games and breaking I the law. I think you're missing the subtlety of the argument. Well, no, I, I speak with you a lot. I understand exactly what you're saying. But uh, there's might not. there's people that will allow academic misconduct. That's more, at least to me, as somebody that's around college athletics. When you're just there to win basketball games, yeah. you can let some things slide. When you're there to maybe make a semi-pro basketball team that They're just here to win games That's monetarily it. subsidizes their players' um, extracurricular activities, I mean, you, then then you are um, well, you're breaking the law. Now, breaking the law well, in the former sense has become a lot easier now with the NIL money. If you look yeah. at what Texas is doing, setting up a nonprofit to uh, pay their players millions of dollars. And, and I told you it was going to be Texas. When this came out, I said the one to look out for is Texas because they are the most desperate of all these big schools to win. They have not won in a long time. There is huge money there. And I think that the University of Texas payroll will be higher than the Houston Texans payroll. It's just going to take them a little bit and they're on the way to doing that. Okay, I mean everything that you just said. When I say they're just here to, wear, to win basketball games, just the heck with the rest of it. But I'm so starved to win as anybody else. And yeah, maybe that's a little bit too far. So we'll leave out the Bruce Pearls. We'll leave out the Rick Patinos, And focus in on, I guess, the two guys that I continue to think are left in this pool. One is Andy Enfield. Mm -hmm. Went to Hopkins, a Maryland guy. He also has a degree from Maryland. Okay, I know more as a Hopkins guy. Yes, he has a degree, so that makes him a Terp, but not a Terp like a Gary Williams or a Steve Blake. Um, and the other one that I that Jordan, young Terp Jordan, pointed out three years ago said Kevin Willard's probably going to be the next guy, which is why I think that you know later in life you might be found on an ESPN, and Jordan's probably going to be an athletic director at a big school mm -hmm. um, because he he recognizes stuff like this. I think it's a it's just Kevin Willard. It was the minute, to me, the minute this happened, the guy's going to be Kevin Willard. But you shake your head ruefully. I think he's plateaued. I really do. He has kind of not really found his way at Seton Hall. There are some recruiting violations there. And I just don't, I really don't see that energizing people the way it. I'm not here to energize people. I'm well, still stuck if on you look at the, to win some games. If you look at the financial situation of the university, I think it's actually the, the opposite of that. financial situation, you're going to bet that they just brought in another million dollars. We have to get to that later. Who'd they sign a contract? Points bet or, or something like that. I follow sports game when I can't even keep up with um, how many new books seem to appear. Okay, so if Kevin Willard's not your guy, I have to stop interrupting myself, then who is? I don't really have one at this point. Uh, I think Why you actually, um, I, I'm not really one for the executive search firms. I think they're kind of ridiculous in college athletics, to be honest, that you pay people already in the seven-figure range. Some schools pay multiple people in the seven-figure range to, um, to do this job. To do this job. This is the job. Um, 
when you look at Enfield, I think that there's a couple years of success, but there's also some really bad basketball that played at USC uh, before Evan Mobley was there. When you look at Kevin Willard, there's the recruiting violations in a team. Now, it's Seton Hall, and and I'm not the biggest Big East basketball buff that's ever existed. I don't really think Seton Hall's ever been that, that good. In the modern era. I mean, the, they did yeah. go to the Final Four. That was a long time ago. And it's it's a tough place. I, I saw a name get thrown out, and the last name's Smith, the coach of Washington's, Washington State. <laughs> um that's an interesting one. Washington State is at the absolute bottom of the bucket in Power Six basketball. And I didn't know this, but uh, a poster on one of the boards somewhere put it up. Yeah. They were averaging 2,500 fans a game before this guy got the coaching job. They're now like 7-0 and to start this season. Is this the guy that's a Baltimore guy? He is. Atlanta? He's a Maryland guy, too. Yeah. and Or a Maryland-raised guy, you know. Mm-hmm. These days, it's so hard to get into the actual school Maryland, as I would know that uh, there's just – you almost have to throw into the pool of they came from Maryland. Right. Uh, and and that's somewhat appealing. I really tend to think on your just-win basketball games, I'm not exactly looking for a guy that's going to bring in a bunch of five-star basketball players or you may hear for five seconds. I really think the recipe for winning college basketball games at this point is bringing in a coach similar to not really the exact same, but the model that I'm looking at is – what uh, Matt Painter is doing at Purdue, he doesn't take many transfers. He doesn't recruit the best players. It's consistent guys that if you're really good, like Caleb Swanigan, you're on the floor since you're a freshman. You stay there till you're a senior. If you're decent, you don't really see the floor much until you're a sophomore unless they really need you. And then you play out the rest of your career so and that- play a traditional Gary Williams-esque kind of style of, of so rising players. sounds like there. Fran McCaffrey as well. Uh, yeah. Iowa. By the way, congrats to Purdue. That now leaves Maryland as one of the only schools that's never been number one during the season. Uh, Purdue was now number one this week. And oh. there were a lot of, on that point, not that we really came here to talk about that, there were a lot of national media graphics and, and things thrown like that, because that was a real story. What? The Purdue becoming number one yeah. that said only teams to be ranked number one. Which is incorrect because then they would have missed almost every school to win a national championship, which is a much different list than every school that's been number one during the regular season. True. So uh, we're going to head to break here in a second, but I want to thank everybody who watches on Turp Talk. If anybody looked at our stats, the two million minutes of Maryland stuff being watched means a lot to me. Uh, Being a YouTube partner because all of you guys follow us and watch, that's really cool. So thank you. This is brought to you as most of the work on our YouTube channel is brought to you by Rick Jacklich, the big dog, of course, Viner Four Gates Consulting. And we have one more sponsor just for bowl week or so is Superior Bus Tours. If you need a ride to Yankee Stadium, as you'll see in this short ad, get a hold of Superior. They'll get you up to the game. They'll bring you back a half hour after the game ends. It's $79. You have to take care of your own tickets to the Pinstripe Bowl. We'll be back in a minute on this Thursday night edition of Turk Talk. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Call Superior Tours for your trip to the Pinstripe Bowl to see the Terps on December 29th. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer. The Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm. And why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. As well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jack Litch Law Group the very best. Best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Hiring the Jackalich Law Group was the best decision anyone in our family has ever made. Who's your lawyer? 
The Jack Litch Law Group. Who are the big dogs? The Jack Litch Law Group. Woof! At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. Back at the in-home studio for Terp Talk, it's Wayne Viner, Mason Viner. Bruce is away from the microphone. Uh, so Maryland is the first college team. The first Big Ten team. I'm oh, sorry, first Big Ten team to sign up with an actual sports book. Mason, what have they won? Well, they have a sponsorship with PointsBet, and you know, Maryland released a statement about this, and it's somewhat unclear what it's actually going to look like. It looks like they're going to run some events around the stadium, possibly do, um, probably put on some like tailgate-like events, which is what a lot of brands do that sponsor with college athletics, because even with the NIL which the NCAA just kind of threw out there mm-hmm. what what NIL is. They didn't really put any rules to it, which is why right. different compliance offices at the schools have a lot of power, more power than they used to have. They already started with a lot. Um, which is now starting to me to sound like it's not interested legally. Yeah. Instead of hmm. name, image, and likeness. But I can't. That's a fair. That's a fair. I, um, I cannot believe. It actually galls me that we're having a sports book partner with a university athletics program when the whole emphasis was to make sure to keep gambling out of these sports to make sure that these players are are not tainted by these outside interests are are close enough to being amateurs and now we've got points bet named official partner at university of maryland and and it just seems wrong this is questionable to me And, and while i pick games on the radio with Bruce, and I, and I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things to do when it comes to Bruce and I on the radio. Uh, and, 1,300, the bet in Baltimore. And I really like looking at the lines and using them to kind of detect where there may be some more information about the game out there. Is this part of this is my fault because I brought you on as our prognosticator as a 10-year-old? No, it is not that story. But I really don't understand college athletics sports gambling in the sense of what you just said and look i stand by the free education is worth a lot of money for a long long time that line now this stuff is worth a lot of money but college athletics is a very expensive thing to execute there is no doubt about that but when you start bringing in sports books to give you money to have access to your fan base's advertising around the college athletic events, you uh, basically, in my opinion, got to start paying the players. Well, you've just gone pro. Yeah. You've gone pro. So everything that's with you goes pro. And I'm back to this argument. I don't mean arguing that we're arguing. I mean philosophical argument that the English soccer clubs that have the, the younger teams. The academies, yeah. That's the way this should be done. These teams should not be attached to universities. This this day is gone. This should be a professional team aligned with the university, but not actually the university anymore. You can't tell me it's college sports with the USS Terrapin club seats, with the Ritz-Carlton practice facility, having a sports book with your name on it. This is not, it's just wrong. But I still love it, and I still go, and yeah, I'm still a top I'll therapy throw, club donor. I'll and all throw that. another scenario about out about that. Now, the Jones Hill House and the and the new coal project, in a sense, can be justified in a way. Now, it's ridiculously expensive, but a lot of that money came from people that were willing to give to that cause. It's one thing to have companies like the Strategic Factory which is in Owings Mills, and Chesapeake Energy, which is a local energy company, which is a bigger company. In downtown Baltimore. Yeah. Maybe the part of Exelon, but anyway. And, you know, you throw well, out. One day, people. Viner Forgate. Yeah, and like and company Rick like Jacklich. Viner Forgate, so let's look at it. Rick yeah. Jacklich's law firm. Yeah. I mean, you can look around that, and those are local businesses running ads at the local, the state university. And that, that costs a fair amount of money, and, you know, it's something that, some people find that in 1057 the fan and the team 980, you know, the people that sponsor Maryland right now. It's another thing, and you can even go to the Capital One Bank and formerly Chevy Chase Bank. It, it makes sense. You know, that those are companies that do that. Right. Now, when you look into sports books mm-hmm. and 
it just doesn't really align with the rest of it. And that was the whole conversation around legal sports gambling, which, by the way, I support because people are going to do it anyway. The state might as well make money and fund things with it. OK. And, and we had a conversation at lunch where I said it's one of those products that, in my mind, everybody who wants to do it already does it. So when they say there's all this more money, more money, more money, mm-hmm. I don't really know if there is. Just because I see DraftKings does not mean I'm going to go out and start gambling. Um, they have to do a lot, a lot of advertising. I'm just not into the actual gambling. I like the line and all that, but I I do enough without gambling, without having that. And mm-hmm. you you brought up the fact that the gambling part online where it's all reported mm-hmm. isn't quite as attractive as making a bet with your local, if there's a local guy, because one of those is tax well, it, free and one of them isn't. Well, it is and it isn't. A, a lot of people like the the Barstool sports book and the and the DraftKings and FanDuel and all that. And it actually just became legal, really truly legal in Maryland today, which is why it's kind of part of this story, which is why University of Maryland signed this the day before. When I look at all of it from the financial standpoint, is you look at the stocks that are associated with it, the score, which is the first sports book in Canada, and Canada's not, if you look at to bring other things that were formerly legal into it, the legal marijuana industry kind of went the same way. Canada approved it first and it it failed in Canada for the most part. The stocks did not reach the same highs. They were all pumped up kind of like a lot of the sports books were, but the score, which is the only sports book in Canada right now, I'll get to my point here in a second. Well, I got a question about that. Yeah. Is that the same app? Yes, the same app that you and I have been using turned into a sports book. It was acquired by Penn National Gaming, which right. also has the Barstool sports book. Basically, after its IPO launched and then fell about eight dollars in a week. Mm-hmm. The only reason why I know that is I'm one of the fools that purchased it at the IPO right. point. Uh, Penn National Gaming, even with all the, they've had some other things go wrong, but they're buying casinos that have sports books left and right because, well, it's basically, if you're not one of the big guys, you're losing in this market. And mm-hmm. DraftKings, FanDuel, Penn, which are the three big ones, have had basically down years after hitting record highs. Penn Nationals down $45 since the summer. Start to look around, and like you said, it had this huge rush. It's going to bring all this money into all these states, and mm-hmm. everybody looks at it because the ads they run. You get $100 in free play if you put $10 into it. Somebody that doesn't really do it, okay, I'm probably going to bet all $120 on one game. I lose it. Not worth my time, not worth my money. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things. And even when things that sponsored, like our friend Kevin Sheehan's had mybookie.ag. And he's been friends with people down there for a long, long time and has bet offshore for a long, long time on websites you can pull up on Google Chrome. They're not illegal. Mm -hmm. People that were going to do it, they offered the same kind of deals, the same lines, very, very reputable as far as paying out the money that you won. Mm -hmm. Nobody really did. Not many people really did it before. And they're not really going to do it now past, I think, a year from when it becomes legal in the state. Okay. So what's the name of that really cool looking bar restaurant that's opening up? Uh, Sport and Social. Yeah, it's been open in Pike and Rose. There's one in Maryland Live in Hanover. According to Bruce, there is. Um, Bruce is really jacked up to go. I'm, I want to go to the one in Rockville just because. The Rockville being Pike and Rose. Yeah, being mm-hmm. North Bethesda. And air quotes now officially North Bethesda well, be a metro station. Well, they changed it to a metro uh, station. I'm excited to go because it looks interesting. Now in Maryland, you cannot place a sports bet ticket until you're 21. Um, I just want to go out and see, but okay. you know, you're talking about a place. That, that's whatever the fair n- enough. We're, we're a little late in the segment here, so I think uh, uh, before we wrap this up for the night, because we need to do it again probably on Sunday after. The you're going to see the formerly named Redskins and the uh, currently named Cowboys, currently named Cowboys at a sold out and rocking FedEx field. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm expecting a lot of Cowboys fans to be there. And I think there there generally are when they play the Cowboys kind of regardless of where it's at. Mm -hmm. One of the, I think, most bizarre ticket price stories that's really been around. Just you have all these formerly Redskin fans, now Washington football team fans, that are absolutely furious that the ticket prices for this game, after they cut the stadium down from 92,000 to 65,000 seats uh, over a period of time, mm-hmm. 
the ticket prices for this game are upwards now of like $275 to $300. So we went the game before. When yeah, the last, last home game. We won Monday Night Football. They had an announced crowd of 51,000 people there. and that were Most of them dressed as empty seats. It was very effective. Uh, we had club seats. Just for reference about how much were Yeah, they- I paid $80 a ticket. No fees. Tick pick. Thank you. Sponsor us, please. Yeah. Um, but, you know, out there now you can find um, these no fee ticket sites and the ticket prices, by the way. For all you people that buy a lot of stuff on Ticketmaster, there's other ways out there. You just gotta look it up a little bit. Just ask Mason. Um, you can get in even okay. when they play the Eagles, sixty dollars. But so, they have this one game that really means something around here, and people pay a lot of money to go. And everybody's complaining that the team caused this by making the prices so much. Face the facts, they're last in attendance in the league. They gotta make money somewhere. Well, this is a good time to make money. This is a mini playoff game. It's sort of fact for the Washington football team and many NFL teams, the next five games or so, that's it. You win the five games or four of the five you're in, you lose them, you're out. Makes the NFL, as and it was in the Washington Post today, but I've heard it so many times over the years, a perfect NFL season is everybody goes eight and eight. That's what they're aiming for. And that's for. where they're going for this year. Yeah. Well, you can't this year. you got to go nine and what that yeah. would make it. Yes, nine and eight. Nine and eight. What What a record that would be. Uh, we will pop back in, try and do this a little more regularly. There's a lot of Maryland news popping. Of course, Maryland basketball is in Brooklyn. The Barclays Center takes on Florida on Sunday at 4.30. We were going, but you know, other things got in the way. We are very excited to be going to the Pinstripe Bowl, any bowl. I would have gone anywhere. We yeah. would have been in Phoenix if it was in Phoenix, Detroit, whatever. Just really happy that there is a Maryland football bowl game. Um, so that's my last word. Mason, anything that closes this out? Yeah, a lot of Maryland football news coming out. Really not enough to cover it uh, in this show as it's just rapidly changing with the transfer portal. They're bringing in a lot of guys to look at, but can't really build a football team off the transfers. they got to start recruiting uh, guys that are just going to stick around for their length and time in the program, and we'll see where it kind of ends up and do a wrap-up show after the bowl game and after the early signing period. You got it. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. And as we've said before, as long as Maryland keeps playing, we're going to keep doing this. We'll see you all soon. Good evening.